He will become sin with my help. Lies. Forget them. Yes. If he becomes sin, Sir Jack will be saved. We're leaving. You know something, tell me! <laughs> tell me. A classic Oren. Sins. My old man. You hit your head. Sin is my old man. My old man became sin. I don't know how or why he did it. I felt him inside. And when I did, I knew it was true. Yeah, I'm not sure that's the greatest localization ever, that one. My old man's spear is suffering. Sorry. Even knowing that sin is your father. Still, you know I must. Yeah, let's get him. I know. Let's get him. I think my old man would want that. You'd fight your own father? Yeah, no problem there. Huh. Uh, about your old man. You sure this ain't some kind of bad toxin dream or something? <laughs> oh, Walker. Then, Chapu. Poor oh, guy. I, uh, I think I'll just pretend I didn't hear nothing. I'm getting a little confused, yeah? Why, why'd all this have to happen? We'll learn when we arrive, soon. Yeah, his confusion is very understandable. But yeah, some, I think some unfortunate localization happened there with the whole <laughs> I felt him inside business. Which one of it? Yeah, there you go. Sneaky chest here. But yeah, for anyone curious, um, I mentioned that if I failed the first time, I would just do a, a cheesier strat the second time to make sure we win. And the cheesier strat is basically to poison damage him and then just chill and let the poison damage kill him. Uh, that way he doesn't switch forms, he doesn't go to the total annihilation phase. And it will just be, you have to just survive the last of Atrophy uh, slash cross cleave. As long as you can survive that stuff, then he can't kill you. So that's, it's a long fight, it's grindy, but it's a pretty foolproof way to win if you ever need it. Hey TJ, welcome to the stream. Uh, we've got just under an hour or so left to go. And we have another di relatively difficult section of encounters, I think. Um, I'll probably get to about Sanctuary Keeper at best, and we'll wrap things up there. Could even put haste on flux to make the poison. Yeah, you could, but I guess maybe then you're less likely to prepare for a cross cleave, maybe, depending on how strong you are. Still deathless, I think so. Yeah, I think it is. Chat can let me know, but I'm pretty sure Kimari saved us in the last session from the first um, potential game over. It doesn't speed him up that much since he has to trade turns with Morty. Fair enough. It's not. I don't think I've ever tried hasting him while he's poisoned. <laughs> Chapu tried to no spirit check. Yeah, that that almost game over in the last session. That was a that was a really nice moment for Kamari. Absolutely killed it there. So, where are we at now? What can I use in this area? What kind of stuff do we encounter? Honestly, I think, thankfully, we have the TKO again because we're going to need it underwater. I think, again, those underwater fiends are not immune to petrification. Tess Nilsson, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, the only person that can do a no Sriguru solo against Czech is uh, is Riku. I do have a no Sriguru Riku only solo challenge on the channel. Very very old stuff. But if you're ever curious, you watch it. See you later, Edward. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Right, I think in general it should be fine. Go back out there. Wow. 
Oh yeah, we've got this sequence first. Kinda looks like the live stream, no? Yeah, that what, bit. What I think. Those? I think that bit specifically those loud. Faith. <sighs> yeah, it does have some a life, a live stream kind of vibes. Someone is using these faith. Someone is drawing energy from all of them. This many? Who wields power on this scale? And what could they be calling? Hey, you know something, don't you? Spill, Spill the, the beans. beans. Look not to others for knowledge. This is your journey too. Oh, Orin. Uni might die, you know? No. Orin's right. Huh? This is our... <sighs> this is my story. What? Yeah, wacky theory time about these guys actually being the Cetra. It's the most live stream looking thing that we see basically in the entire game. Nothing else really looks like that, which is kind of interesting. Like that tornado of water was basically surrounded by what looked like live stream. Hey. Eh? One of my favorite visuals of the entire game. I had this screen as like my wallpaper for a long time. I've made cinemagraphs of this screen. Like, I just love this shot. It's Dreams Anakin aesthetically is, for me is one of the coolest looking areas. Just that whole like, obviously you got the futuristic city thing, but I think the water just really sets it apart. Just makes it. That's what makes it so Final Fantasy for me. So it's awesome. For some reason, a little washing machine here just always cracks me up. It's just like, it's almost like they could have a different technology for washing clothes, but they just have washing machines. It just feels weird. <laughs> you remember me? We met in Bavel. Uh, yeah? Yeah. But that wasn't the first time we met. I've known about you for a long time. A long, long time. I, I feel like I know you too. Where are we? <laughs> Silly, don't recognize your own home? What's gotten into you, hey? Wake up! Wake up! Wait, this is a dream. Precisely. A dream? Are, Are you, you crazy? crazy? I don't have time to be dreaming now. You're wrong. It's not that you're dreaming. You are a dream. Huh? Wait a sec. Yeah, the part of the game that I do think, for me personally as well, the first ever time I played did go over my head a little bit. But I think... That scene there, one of the things that always I wonder in my head in terms of the lore and how things work is never truly explained about, like, obviously, Yu Yevon has been summoning um, Dream Zanakin for like a thousand years. And the whole idea of, like, for me at least, was Titus one of the original people from Dream Zanakin, because he doesn't know about Yu Yevon, right? So he doesn't know who Yu Yevon is. I assume if he was alive during the time of the Machina War and uh, Yu Yevon and all that stuff, then he would obviously kind of know more about this stuff. So he wasn't around. So he was basically created within Dream Zanakin, right? 
So in my head, I was always like, it begins with the, the way I rationalize Dreams Anakin and how it works for the last thousand years is that it begins with the people who sacrifice themselves. They become like the first, I guess, almost residents of uh, Dreams Anakin. And then over time, the dream kind of takes on like a form of itself. So the people who are residents of Dreams Anakin, they have their own children. And those children weren't originally born in Dreams Anakin. But the dream kind of takes on a life of its own and it starts to basically progress through time. And it becomes much more like a real reality in and of itself. And so Titus is born like 980 years after that process begins. And so that's how I've always kind of seen it. But the way that Bahamas Faith kind of just says, I've known about you for a long, long time. For, for the time span of a faith like that, a long, long time means probably not just like 17 years. Uh, it probably means a lot longer. And so does that mean that Titus has been around in some form? Like maybe Dream Sanakin is more of a loop. And once like the memories and the dreams of the people who sacrifice themselves kind of end, it resets and it begins again. And so that's how Bahamut's known about Titus for, for such a long time. I find that quite interesting. Um, so there's there's different ways to look at it. Either you assume it's a cycle and... Titus was maybe around, actually, when Dreams Anakin was created, but maybe over time, his, you know, memories and the history of it has disappeared, so he doesn't, he has no idea who Yu Yevon is, or what the Machina War is, or anything like that. Or, he's not originally from uh, Zanakin, and he was basically, he's a product of the dream, and the dream's been cycling or progressing, whichever way you look at it, for like a thousand years, and he's come onto the scene, like, 17 years ago, so it's... It's definitely always interesting. I don't think there's a clear answer for it, but the way Bahamas Faith said a very, very long time, it's like how could the Faith have known about Titus for so long if he's only if he's only 17, right? So either he's existed in different cycles for a very, very long time, or there's something else going on. So it's it's quite interesting. Just every time I, I play the game, I get a different kind of thought and perspective about this side of the law. It's fascinating. Ago, there was a war. Yeah, with Machina, right? Yes, a war between Zanarkand and Bavel. Bavel's Machina assured their victory from the start. Spira had never seen such power. The summoners of Zanarkand didn't stand a chance. Yeah, I mean, there was literally summoners back then. Zanarkand was doomed to oblivion. That's why we tried to save it, if only in a memory. What, what did you, did you do? do? The remaining summoners and the townspeople that survived the war, they all became faith, faith for the summoning. The summoning? You mean sin? No, I mean this place. <laughs> A Xanarkand that never sleeps. Oh, what? The dreams of the faith summoned the memories of the city. They summoned all the buildings, all the people who lived there. The people? What? They're all dreams? Me? Too? Yes, you're a dream of the faith. You, your father, your mother, Everyone. All dreams. And if the faith stopped dreaming... Yeah, that's why it's so hard to understand, because they're saying they dreamed of, of the memories of everyone who lived there. And then she... Well, then the, the faith includes him in there as well, like you, your father, everyone. They're all dreams, based on the memories of the city. So it's like, but he didn't live in that city at the time. Because then he would have known about, like, Bevel or the Machina War or Summoners or anything like that. So, that part of the story is a bit tough. No! So, so what, what if I'm a dreamer? dreamer? I... I, I like, like being here. here. We've been dreaming so long. We're tired. Would you and your father... Would you let us rest? 
Both you and your father have been touched by Sin. Sin, the one around whom all Spira, the Spiral, evolves. What are you saying? You two are more than just dreams now. Wake up! Wake up, please! Just a little more, and maybe... Maybe you are the dream that will end our dreaming at last. The dream to end our dreaming at last. Awesome. Hey, Bram, welcome to the stream. Good to see you. Are you alright? Oh, phew. Hey, we were so worried about you. You okay? I... I'm okay. What happened? Nothing. I blacked out. I was dreaming. <laughs> you called me. And I woke up. Now Let's go, guys. <laughs> Nothing like a good nap. Well, I'm ready. Let's go. And <laughs> check the note clipped out of Zanuck. And um, there is some stuff in the Ultimania about this. Obviously, in game, they just say to you, he went out to training one day and never came back. Um, the Ultimania talks a little bit about how he was. I remember translating a segment that says something along the lines of he was basically, ba like he was almost testing the waters. He was going out to train and he was going like further and deeper every single time and just basically pushing himself to the limit to see how far he could, he could swim out or how deep he could swim. And basically as a culmination of this, he basically kept pushing the boundaries. And then, yeah, he basically no clipped into sin and um, made his way to Spira. So it wasn't like this one-off random event. Uh, that's how the Ultimania describes it. It talks about it being more of a just, he was generally just pushing the boundaries of how far he could go in, um, in Dreams Anakin. Maybe he had some kind of intuition or inkling that he was in somewhere that seemed like it was self-contained. And so he was trying to have a bit of a Truman Show moment. I don't know. Now, here the enemies go up another notch. Uh, 31,000, just a mere 31k, nothing major here. Um, obviously, can the TKO come to my rescue or can death come to my rescue? Let's use death here. I think let's just... Mm, no, I think I'm going to steal first. Especially at this stage of the game, most, most fiends have stuff that's worth stealing. Yeah, two remedies at once. Um, death in reserve. I think it might be resistant to death as well. Damn it. Let's just see if it works. Zanakin isn't sure to have ships or aircraft, so I guess the only way to get out is to swim. Nothing stopped them from being about to leave. It That's just took the best done. blitzer at the time. Yeah, could be. But yeah, we just confirmed that death works. Since I'm near a save sphere, I thought it was worth using it. 31k is a bit of a pain. Yeah, so things get even more dangerous with the lights of these. Um, mm. honestly, I think it might be another dream powder kind of enemy. Stop.
think these guys can fall asleep too, but again, a lot of HP. Runaguy, welcome to the stream. Thanks for joining us. Let's see if this works. <laughs> yeah, Kimari stop there is brilliant. We're using up a bit of MP to do this, but I think it's Don't worth move. it. All. There it is. Um, what else can we do here? What about... I think I tried the attack last time. Yeah, there you go. That sits him down. Immediately waits back up. Of course. So it's taking a lot of MP to keep them at bay here, but then at this stage I just can't really like power through enemies as easily. And again, I'm near a save sphere. Stop. So I'm gonna... Oh, it missed this time. What a bastard. It's gonna die now. Okay, thankfully TK worked. This guy's flame ball is relatively weak compared to how powerful an enemy it is. And it doesn't have a very good steal, unfortunately. I think it's resistant though. No? There you go. TKO is still this deep into the game. Still doing it. Wow. Okay. Definitely worth a save here. Yeah? <laughs> From P Birdman mod, I'm used to that guy's flame ball doing like 3k damage. Yeah, d totally different beast. Alright, let's do the trials of Gagazette. Titus has been practicing his magic, but still, I don't think it's going to be enough against these guys, really. Oh boy. Woo! What was the line? How many stakes do you think you can get out of these? I think, again, um, not immune to poison, possibly. Mm. I just want to see what it's not immune to. I forgot for this one. Magic break. Not that great. And what about this? We kind of have to just try things out one by one again to remember what we can do. Yep, okay. Yeah, this is probably going to kill us in one go. Oof. Yeah, <laughs> this is a, a, a serious enemy here. Try the old one too. That one works. Sleep and poison together, man. So good. So, so good. Try and save some MP here. Yeah. You basically need the buster, otherwise it's not going to work. Ether, that's a good steal. Boron survives this with Sentinel. There we go. Get one more steal. Oh, come on. Only one. Get out of here. So it's quite like MP intensive work here to poison them, keep them asleep, all that kind of stuff, but it's working. Can't hurt. And a little more agility for Auron also can't hurt. What 
is this? A new ability. And she gets some more HP in this bit as so well. Oh, a Senna, that's nice. I do have a decent chunk of remedies, but I think always having a Senna is obviously one of the fundamentals. It's good to have. Gets dangerous, you know what to do. Looks like we got a job to do, yeah? If anything should happen in the water, we're relying on you three. If it gets dangerous, pull out quick. Right. <laughs> Be careful, okay? Waka not listening to those instructions later in the story is how Vidina was born. I think they can afflict you with poison. Yeah, at least in this run, Waka does have protect, to be fair. Is there anything we can give Riku to make her a little more useful here? There's got to be something. Piercing. Ah, well, to be fair, I'm not going to use Friend Spheres in this run, honestly. <laughs> this run isn't canon. Yeah. Um... Maybe just like piercing, counter attack, whatever. Like, let's just give her something because she's generally not being used very much. So, at least that helps a little. Is there anything here or you just see across to the other side? I think you just see across. There's nothing on that one. Right. Just high level enemies here. Let's see how many Thundargas it's going to take. If I could get them in two, that'd be brilliant. Nah, it's going to take three. We just had a little more magic. One, three, three, two. She can take these out, at least. And he should have, have enough of that, yes. Yeah, okay. I remember then. There's that counter attack coming in. And there's that auto mech coming in. Nice. Hmm. It's, its attack is pretty big if it successfully does it three times. We can beat this guy with evade and counter and counter attack as well and also TKO. So once again we've got enough tools to, to get the job done here. Glorious art guard. Picked up a few of those. MP plus 10%. Here we go. Gonna need like 50 attempts for this. There's one side of it that's easier and one side of it that you get blocked off on. Okay. Here we go. Boom. Yeah. I think I need to start speed running. It's the final frontier. But I always said I won't do it. Not for this game. I love this game too much to speed run it. On we go. Oof. I mean, even using Thundarga is going to take like six Thundargas to kill them, so we basically just have to, again, rely on uh, Waka to help us out here. I don't want to use, like, Flare and stuff. Even then, I, I just don't have the MP. So 
so we're kind of stuck. Just have to wait until Walker does his thing. <laughs> but Titus doing 325 damage at this stage of the game is just hilarious. Good stuff. navigated that one pretty easily, but mostly because the TKO worked first time. And this being an ambush is not good. Mm. And well, I think for me, um, I, as I always say, people always ask me like, oh, how do you not burn out from playing Final Fantasy X? I think at this stage, for me, it's the fact that I always basically do a different run every time. But with a speed run, I think it's literally the goal to do, to try to do the same run every time, but just do it successfully. And so I think that's what kills it for me, the fact that I have to play it the same way every single time, basically, in order to try and get some kind of record time or whatever. And so it just goes against like how I'd want to experience the game for me. As Elno drops in with five gifted subs, thank you so much. Always good to see you. Never chats too much, but always uh, historically been a huge supporter of the channel, so appreciate it a lot. Oh, 328 damage. Atrocious. But you can see that move is not one that you can evade. I don't see how it ruins the experience. Obviously, that I mean, if that were true for everybody, then no one would bother speedrunning games they like. Obviously, it's just a very personal thing. It's just, for me, it would definitely ruin the experience. If I had to play Final Fantasy X the same way, over and over again for like six months. Basically, yeah, over and over again the same way until I got a record time. Like that's that's literally a recipe to, to burn me out from the game and stop me enjoying it the same way. Doing like, what, like two playthroughs a year of different challenges, that to me that's a whole like different stratosphere of you know longevity for the game. But yeah, always got respect for speedrunners, man. Like the, the dedication that they put in. Uh, to be able to like master these games and achieve the times that they do and stuff like that, it always blows my mind. So, and well, also <clears throat> also figuring out the routes and the strategies to get the quickest times and that kind of thing, it's all just it's all just amazing work. But it's just not for me. Speed running doesn't mean doing it over and over. Only if you actually want to complete. What does that mean? I mean, how are you supposed to get good at a run if you don't keep repeating it, right? I think in the process of even learning how to do a quick run, you're going to have to play the game a lot, like over and over, to memorize the roofs, the strats, like what stuff you're using. I'm not talking about just like copying the moves that you see from a speed run one time just for fun. I mean like actually trying to speed run a game properly. There's no way you're going to get good at speed running a game without doing it quite a few times, I'm sure, so, yeah, I'm not sure I agree with that. But as I say, to each their own. Yeah, so when the TKO doesn't work, things slow down. But we're almost out of here. Come on, Walker. No, I mean, again, it's not because doing a no sphere grid run, you only have to run through the game one time. Like, grinding in the same area for, let's say, I don't know, you need stamina tablets for a no sphere grid run. It's a, it's a different thing to playing the game from start to finish again and again, or having to fight the same boss in a different way every single time. Like. They're two, for me, they're two completely different types of grind. One is basically grinding the entire game until you, you get really good at it, so you can play it really fast. And the other one is grinding for like individual preparation items and stuff. I don't know, I see it, I see it completely differently. 
like a challenge run versus speed run, they're two totally different disciplines, uh, in my opinion. Like by the end of a no sphere good run, you you played the game once. By the end of a speed running journey with a game, you, you've played it a lot more than once. And it's not the kind of thing. Oh, I'm going to speed run it once today, and then I'll do it again in three months' time, and then once again in six months. Like you you need to to focus on it to to get good at it. I think. Okay. Back to the Lulu show. Then, what next? I think I would have been more interested in speed running in the original, like the OG days, where um, I, w I would have been more interested in coming up with strategies of how to do the speed run. As you wish. Because um, it's been around for so long. Obviously, the game has been really like, yes, there's people still breaking records today and people are finding new things, etc. But I would have loved to have been around in the earliest days of speedrunning where people are trying to figure out strategies for how to play the game quickly. And so I'm more interested in potentially like offering insight into, you know, how to beat a boss a quicker way or a particular setup and that kind of stuff, as opposed to the actual kind of implementation of trying to get through the game and RNG farming for like, you know, good outcomes and to defeat things as quickly as possible and that kind of thing. So I think that's the side of speedrunning that always uh, would have interested me, but by the time I even got good at the game and became aware of, you know, speed running and how it all works and stuff, it was already too late. Like the game had been done in under ten hours, including the cutscenes, so um, it just didn't have the same appeal after that. So unfortunately, that's like one boat that I personally uh, missed out on. Yeah, that figuring things out stage is a big, big draw for a lot of speed runs. Exactly, and for me, I feel like that's kind of gone in Final Fantasy X. Like to find that, I think you maybe you need to be more into like the hacking side of things, maybe you can hack and find certain skips or like exploits um, that, that weren't there before. Yeah, that's why I personally don't really watch speedruns. I've never seen a, I've never seen a full speedrun of Final Fantasy X uh, either. But stuff like Elden Ring, etc., like games where, in my opinion, it still requires a bit more reflexes and mastery of real-time skills, let's call them. Um, that's a, that's the side of speedrunning that I do find much more fascinating. So games like Metal Gear, um, Elden Ring, I've definitely watched a lot of speedruns in the past for that type of stuff. But Final Fantasy, it doesn't interest me um, as much for speedruns. RNG is just it stands for like random number generator, basically anything, these these types of games, you are constantly faced with the game rolling dice behind the scenes and deciding on outcomes, and obviously certain outcomes are better than others, so even um, something like the amount of encounters you get going from A to B, if you get good RNG, maybe you'll get two encounters, if you get bad RNG, you'll get four, and so you have to keep, go if you want to get the best time, you have to keep going through that area or do repeat attempts where you get as few encounters as possible, and that's just obviously one thing out of hundreds of things that are going to happen in the run where having better or worse RNG is going to affect the time and so yeah Final Fantasy 13 is a really interesting in speedrun sense because it's still about skill and optimization but in real time there are no wonky major glitches to skip half a game on frame perfect fair play it's a game of stand in turn for luck yeah I, I think that's I think that's fair That's why, if, again, personally for me, for Final Fantasy X speedrunning specifically, it was more like the, the figuring out of how to beat the game as quickly as possible. That's the interesting part, and then you have to grind for the RNG this ends now. and get the absolute best run possible where you get everything going your way and, um, yeah, you get through as quickly as you can. Yeah, the Excalibur thing in Final Fantasy IX is interesting. It's like an inbuilt challenge. Um, I, I wonder how quick the Excalibur requirement is compared to um, the, the speed running record. So I think, was it like 12 hours or something for Excalibur 2? If it's 12 hours, then what's the speed run record? Because I don't know how harsh that is. Um, I would imagine like if Excalibur 2 is 12 hours, they probably, the speed run record is probably like six hours or seven hours or something. It's a three-hour difference, okay, yeah. 
Yeah, that's fair. That's the kind of one where, like, I'm sure back in the day, once people even figured out that it exists, it probably would have been really fun to just figure that out yourself. If the game can be done in, in what, like, nine hours? Then 12, I think, for a person to, to figure that out themselves, someone who's, like, passionate about the game, I think that's pretty doable. And so I think that would have been really cool to do. You're a big fan of the game. So we're not going to waste time with any turns on this guy. Alright, second water phase. Oh wait, it's the other side. Always get that wrong. Only a plus one, but more HP. It's good. But I've said it before, it's still something that I, uh, I have on the back burner. Basically, I want to do like a kind of almost a reaction to a speed run. So I, I basically got permission from someone who did like a three hour run of Final Fantasy X. It was like close to a world record time. And I wanted to basically kind of just watch their run and see it for the first time and kind of just see what strategies they were using. Um, as someone who does know the game well but doesn't know it from a speed run angle, I just I'm, I am curious to see what they've done to complete the game so fast. And so I, I asked for their permission if I could use it in that kind of format. And they said okay. So I've had it kind of sit on my hard drive for a while. Um, but I would like to make a piece of content like that. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Maybe once Final Fantasy VIII Attack Only is done, um, I'll have some time to look into that. I think the trouble is I'd watch it and I'd, I think, like, I'd probably miss so much of the, the tricks that they're using because it's just a whole different, like I say, it's a whole different discipline, basically, to speedrun a game. So I'm sure a lot of stuff would just go over my head and I wouldn't really understand what they've even done. These guys just have so much HP. I just can't, like, hack through things anymore. It's just... Yeah, and they, they have immunity to that kind of thing. So it's just... It's tough. But since this is a new encounter, I will fight them once. Beating Penance without Zanmato, 19 hours of real time. Shit, that's that's really fast. Is that like... Um, I assume that's without using, like, you know, this stuff, the times two, times four, etc. If so, that's, that's really... It sounds very impressive. Yeah, unfortunately, too much stuff is just re seems quite resistant to... Just a sleep attack. No boosters, no cutscene removed. That's really cool. I'm impressed. Okay, now we'll leave that guy alone. See you later, Rinner guy. I'm going to be finishing up in about 15 minutes tops. I think I'll probably do this next trial, and then I'll end things there. And then we'll rejoin for Sanctuary Keeper in the next sesh. We made good progress today still. I think um, we did well. Look at that evasion. No backslap. have to face one more attack. Bye-bye.
think I don't think these guys drop evade encounter. I think it's always just counter attack. Yeah. Alright, I think to to be able to wrap up this session, I'm gonna push through a little here. I'm, I'm, all these guys numerous times yeah that's why i was trying not to use evade encounter as much as i could but we'll see hopefully by the time i really need them like to to make more of them i'll have access to teleport spheres more easily but yeah that's what i mean by like the whole um it seems to me at least like it's it's about finding kind of ways to almost like skip things and break things that are the, the kind of final frontiers at this stage for a lot of these uh, Final Fantasy X type games. I'll leave that at that. But yeah, I, I think in general, the, the fact that it's such a community effort is, is what's also so awesome. And the community generally all seems very supportive of each other. Like on the one hand, obviously speedrunning is a competitive thing. But um, on the other hand, there's just like a lot of camaraderie, a lot of, uh, it seems like a lot of respect and friendship among the people that do this stuff. And people just like, they seem happy for each other when they get like world records, even if they're competing. So the way that they kind of, collaborate together to come up with ideas and strategies. I think it's, it's really cool stuff. 312, come on man, you had 325 to do. That's shameful. I know you're a mage now, but like 312 is depressing. And as a result, I got hit with something vicious there. That's what I mean, if you're not careful, you can still get yourself in trouble here. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as I've said, I'm in the same boat. But if you look at how popular speedrunning is, um, you can see that the community for that stuff is absolutely huge. Have I been in the gym? You're looking pretty trim. Thank you very much. But no, I haven't. Uh, I'm not much of a gym person. It's just, it's just the camera angle. I do try and exercise, uh, but no, I don't like uh, do any training as it were. Never have. You know what? How much do I weigh? Such personal questions. Um, I think around like 91 kg. I'm like, I'm just under 6'3", so like 190 in European system, so my something like that. My BMI is just on like the upper end of normal. Actually, I think I'm the same height as Sid. In Final Fantasy X, I think Sid is supposed to be, according to the Ultimania, it's supposed to be the same height as me. Okay. I think I've had enough of these guys. I'm gonna get out of here. We to expect the Sid cosplay Halloween costume in the near future. <laughs> yeah, at least I could I can pull off the, the bald look pretty easily. So I've got that down. Damn, An Annabelle is the one who is who is trim. 
Oh, it was Wonka's turn. Annabelle, are you generally like a... Like, are you just a bit of a skinny person? Or, you know, you're just generally like fit, training, and that's why you're that kind of weight? That seems quite low. Damn, all two is big boy. I don't know, it seems like 80 kg for someone who's basically like six foot four, that's that's on the lighter end of the scale unless like they're like probably training out and, and fit and that kind of thing. But yeah, there's got some got some big people in the chat. So if I ever get into a fight, uh, I'm gonna call all of you guys to back me up. Seems like I've got a strong sw squad of people, so we're good. <laughs> Mediterranean diet is a hell of a drug. Fair play, I hear you. I think there's a bit of a bias here. I think uh, people are a bit more likely to share their height and weight if it's something that's a bit, probably more likely to be in the the healthier end of the scale, let's say. But hey, you guys started it. I don't generally talk about this type of stuff much. I don't want people to feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I think there's not much we can do other than just wait this out. All of your subscribers are six foot chads. I think everyone everyone says they're six foot on the internet. That's how it works, right? I don't think there's any guys that are under, under six foot. You've seen the memes about the difference between six foot and 5'11". That's how it works. <laughs> Trust no one. I did say that to try and encourage some of the, the shorter guys in chat to, to make themselves known. It's all good. We respect everyone here. And that death is starting to work less and less, unfortunately. TK is not doing much for me either. <laughs> 511 is like the 13th fall. We skip it because it's bad luck, yeah. That was a bit rude. Yeah, this guy is just not dying at the moment, so we need to be careful here. You see what I mean? Again, it's just like you get kind of caught up. It's all fun and games, and then suddenly something happens, and it's like, oh shit. Could be in trouble. How did we kill this guy last time? Was it... I think we used death last time, and we managed to win with that. This is starting to annoy me now. It's taking too long. Damn, we have someone who is at the mythical 5'11 in height. Big props to you for not calling yourself six foot. But honestly, I'm gonna s just spam another one here. That earthquake hits hard. I don't wanna take any risks here. You know what? Let's use one of these. It's just gonna not be enough, I think. At least it's gonna die after the earthquake. If it does it. Okay, good. Nice. There we go. Well done, chat, for, for balancing everything out. We had all of the, the, the six foot and over people kind of say their piece, and now we've got the, the more average and shorter guys representing as well. Then there's a rake, but eat like an elephant. I'm jealous. I'm 
think I can do that. That stopped for me at like 22, 23. After that, I stopped being able to, to do that. I have to be careful. I basically intermittently fast all year round to control my weight because I do eat quite a lot. I enjoy eating. And so I have to kind of compensate by intermittent fasting. Otherwise, it gets out of control. Okay. I think we are going to wrap things up here uh, for today because we have Sanctuary Keeper to come. I don't want to uh, get into that boss battle in this session. So I will be back in two weeks' time, hopefully. And I will see you guys there. In the meantime, uh, I will be starting to pop back into the 24-7 stream now that I'm finished with Rebirth recording. Uh, we're still not talking about Rebirth in there, but if, any if anyone wants to chat to me about it, you can DM me on Instagram. We can talk about it. Uh, that kind of stuff. But in terms of like the chats and that kind of thing, we're still... Uh, trying to keep away from Rebirth stuff for now. And yes, it is going to be Sekiro time soon as well. So if anyone is looking forward to uh, watching me play Sekiro for the first time, that's going to be coming on the channel very soon. I'm going to start recording uh, that this week now that the Rebirth Marathon is over. So there's a lot of cool content to come. Fire Fantasy 8 attack only resumes, getting close to the end, but it continues. VODs for this stuff. Rebirth has a long way to go. And there's Sekiro that's going to start too. So hopefully lots to keep everybody happy. I will see you guys soon. Thank you for joining me once again. And take care.